Hi everyone, once again, I am Jenna here from Nature MB. I am here with Monarch vlog number two. If you've seen Monarch vlog number one, you may be a little surprised at some of the progress that we see in the video today, but it has been just two weeks since I filmed the first one. Two weeks, that's it. And Ike is looking a little bit different these days. That is because Ike went into chrysalis. So that's all the time it took. He was doubling in size like every day, basically for not very long, really. And one day he climbed up to the top of his aquarium, hung down in a little J shape. And then before I knew it, there was a chrysalis hanging in the tank. This was very exciting for me because while I had found monarch chrysalids while surveying last year, I had only found them after the monarch butterfly had already closed. So it was the kind of very thin filmy chrysalis that was left behind and not the beautiful bright green chrysalis that we associate with the monarch butterfly. So let's take a look at what um, that chrysalis actually looks like. Hey guys, it's Jenna. If the camera seems a little blurry at all, that's because it is like 90% humidity in Fredericton right now, but I have to show you what I have going on with our little monarch friends. So if you remember, I had an Ikea container. Um, it's not in my hand and you will see why, <laughs> but this is now where all of my monarchs live. And the why is because you see all that stuff that looks like coffee grounds? Yeah, that's poop. So I just threw the other one out. So I'll do a little bit of a cage tour for you. Oh my gosh, look at this guy. He's going wild. Um, but I have some like live milkweed here. It's just milkweed that's in little vials of water. I do have some little containers of water just so it stays nice and humid in there. And then all kinds of milkweed. This was like a lush green oasis yesterday when I set this up and now look completely decimated, poop everywhere. Um, this is a signal to me that I now need to start like completely cleaning this twice a day because oh, look at some of those turds. It looks like aquarium gravel. Holy moly, okay. So here is a freshly stocked aquarium for my monarchs. You can see even in just this wide shot, some caterpillars and various instars. So we've got probably third instar, fourth instar right there. Oh, I was trying to pick up on my hand. And then fifth instar, which is so exciting. This, you remember, that's Ike. That is my first baby that hatched and came home with me. He is gigantic. So here's what we are working with today. A freshly cleaned tank. Pretty much everyone is now feeding on this fresh milkweed that I put in there with little vials of water. The little kind of limp leaves that would collect at the bottom just weren't really enough for them anymore. So we've got um, swamp milkweed and common milkweed all mixed together. So this is what our friend Ike is looking like these days. He's a little tricky to film actually because he decided to form his chrysalis right under the little lip of my aquarium. So I can't really see him if we look down from the top, but I think this will do. You can see that the outer layer of the chrysalis is actually semi-transparent, so there's something happening in there. You can see some kind of dark shapes forming, which means the butterfly is well on its way to being um, formed, which is quite exciting. So the extra caterpillars that I picked up were all laid at different times. They may have all been laid by the same female, just enough time apart, but they were all definitely laid at different times because for a while, I had multiple different instars in my tank, which was pretty cool to see. So an instar is basically a phase in the life of the caterpillar's entire phase. And think of the word instance, right? So an instar has a specific beginning and an end, and that usually begins and ends with the shedding and molting of their skin. So just like a lot of reptiles, caterpillars and a lot of other um, larval stages of insects actually shed, which means at a certain point, the skin that they have grown and the protective exoskeleton that they have is now too small for everything that's contained inside. So because a monarch caterpillar's real only responsibility is to just eat and eat and eat and eat and get big enough to go into the chrysalis, 
they grow out of their outer skin really, really quickly. So basically what happens is the skin that they've grown, at a certain point, it'll just pop open and it pops open from the face, which is like very cool, a little bit creepy to see, but it just pops open from the face and they kind of wiggle out and they leave this old disheveled skin behind. With every instar, those little antenna get a little bit longer, these stripes get a little bit bolder, the colors get a little bit more vibrant, and they just start to look more and more like that kind of signature monarch caterpillar that you think of from like photos online or from textbooks. They have five instars, which means they molt four times. Um, the first instar begins, of course, with hatching out of the egg, and the final one ends with going into the chrysalis. So five different instars, four different molts, all of them really, really interesting to observe. And I've observed a lot of them because I have so many different caterpillars at different life stages out in my aquarium. So when it's time to go into chrysalis in the wild, the caterpillar will actually crawl down from the milkweed plant and find somewhere that's a little bit more secluded to form their chrysalis. You will sometimes find a chrysalis on milkweed, but what you will more commonly find is that they will have crawled to a wood pile nearby or a shrub nearby or even a tree nearby, somewhere where they're a little less vulnerable. Milkweed is quite a sturdy plant, but obviously it's still quite prone to the wind, you know, swaying back and forth. And monarch caterpillars do unfortunately have a lot of predators. So crawling off somewhere where they're a little more secluded is going to give them a better chance of actually becoming a butterfly. In the aquarium, they don't have that level of privacy. So they'll crawl around and look for a good place. And then eventually that biological instinct to form the chrysalis is going to kick in and they'll just form it where they are. Obviously, they probably feel a little bit vulnerable, but they are completely safe. Nothing can get in the aquarium, nothing can get out. I have the screen anchored on top so they're perfectly safe. The very first thing that's going to happen is they're going to stay completely still, hanging on by all feet, gripping right onto the screen or the lid or if you have sticks running across, whatever, they're going to hang upside down. They're going to form a bunch of like silky strands which give them uh, an even stronger anchor point to hang on to. And then at a certain point, the front legs are just going to let go. They're going to hang straight down, holding on by just those last two little legs right at the rear end. Then the head is going to whoop, curl back up and tuck in. And what you're going to see is the J formation. So literally it will look like a little letter J as the caterpillar hangs there. Um, in this stage, you may still see the caterpillar wiggling around a little bit, the antenna may move, but something really, really magical is happening. So just under the surface of that beautiful striped skin, they're getting ready for one last molt. And the layer that they're forming underneath is actually that bright green layer that you see on the outside of the chrysalis. So at a certain point, that layer will become so well defined and will just kind of start to bulge out. And then you will see that striped skin, just like the previous molts, will split. But instead of splitting from the head, it's gonna split right down the back. And that skin will pull up toward the base and eventually it's just gonna dry and crumble away, leaving you with this beautiful, bright green chrysalis. It also has a little delicate line of gold that goes about three quarters of the way around. Something else that you'll also discover by inspecting the outer layer of the chrysalis, which I thought was so cool, and I had never seen this before rearing caterpillars on my own, is you can actually start to see where the structures of the butterfly will form underneath the chrysalis. So you will see on the outside of the chrysalis a pattern that looks very similar to what the wings will end up looking like and that's where the wings will form and you can kind of get an idea of how the butterfly is actually forming inside the chrysalis which is really really neat thanks so much for tuning into this monarch grow along vlog part two i'm going to film one more part which is actually going to chronicle eclosion which is actually just a fancy word for the butterfly coming out of the chrysalis it's still going to be a few days before that can happen i can tell from looking at the chrysalis that things are starting to happen inside but it's not quite there so I'm hoping that maybe this time next week, I will have a butterfly to show you. I'm gonna keep a pretty close eye on its actions and see if I can get it actually coming out of the chrysalis, which would be really, really cool. And so I hope I get to share that with you. Thanks so much for watching.